Nidan, and welcome to season four of my podcast. Today, my guest is Jayshree Ramgopal, or Jayshree Pati, as I call her. She used to head the Hyderabad office of Educational Technologies Limited, or ETL, for many years, and now runs her own art studio called Artrain. Hi, Pati. Welcome to my show. Hi, Vedant. Thank you for inviting me for your show. And I really enjoyed listening to each and every episode of your podcast. Congratulations. Thank you, Patti. Okay, so this will be exciting. Let's go. Yes, I'm also waiting for it. Okay. So, Jeshri Patti, I'm curious to know about your childhood and about growing up in HMT Colony. Well, Vedanta, I was born in a village near Bangalore called Maya Sandra. And my grandfather was the zamindar there. After that, we, we were in Bangalore till I was about eight years. And I studied in Cluny Convent. And then we moved to Hyderabad around 1966. And we were in HMT Colony for quite some time. Yes, HMT Colony life was really, really fun. We had a lot of friends did a lot of activities, played a lot of outdoor games, and it was fun. I would have loved to live in, live there. Yes. You worked at ETL, earlier known as Time Life, and sold books to people. How did you start working there? Well, Vedant, I was teaching in for a very short period in a school called DAV Public School, where one of my students' mother actually was doing this. She approached me. And that's how I got into ETL. Wow. How did you learn to sell books and convince people to buy them? Way back, actually, we were given a very short training, Vedant, as to how to sell the product. But then I did improve a lot on my selling skills on the field. So what happened is we used to approach a lot of parents and convince them that this is a good product. Now, how I sold these books was basically more than the training that I received. I I was very passionate about these books because I believed that it can do a lot to uh, children. And it was a good tool for the parents to give an early start in child in the children. So that's how I started off with Time Life. And yes, as I met each and every parent, I did learn a lot, and that's how I improved on my selling skills. I have lots of the ETL books, and they are really nice. So I'm way more than convinced that I'm way more than convinced that you you have done a really good job selling them. Thank you, Vedant. And I know you've really, really used these books quite a bit. They're really nice. There are lots more that you can still use it. Yep. Can you share any sales tips to my listeners? Sales tips? Oh, there are plenty. But then I would like to share a few of them. Firstly, as a good salesperson, you need to be a good listener. Because when your customer in front of you is expressing either their concern or what they want, We as salespeople need to be good listeners, number one. Number two, we need to give, we are actually, we need to project to the customer what they require and not what I want to sell. That's a very important point in sales. And then never ever argue with the customer. Because if you argue with the customer, the sale is gone. You can never convince a person, that person. So if there is a point that you would like to put across, do it very politely. And yes, we we do all this, we give all this information in the trainings that we I was giving. Yeah. Can you share your experience with the most difficult customer? Experience with the most difficult customer? Yes. There was one person who said, Okay, if I invest in your product, what is the interest I get? 
he was talking from the point of investment and not from a point of helping his child. So that person was a little difficult for me to convince that investing money and earning interest out of it is not the same as investing in something that is going to help your child to give a holistic development. That person was a tough person to crack the order. And I did it, in fact. So he bought it finally? Yes, he bought it. What did you tell him that convinced him to buy it for his child? Uh, well, I did give a lot of examples of my customers' children where they really have helped a lot in uh, developing the overall development in children. Plus, what I used to do is after a customer used the product for some time, I used to take their testimonials. So their comments. So I did show quite a few of the testimonials to this gentleman and he sort of got convinced. He just picked up one set out of the whole program. But then after a couple of months, he called me back and he says, can I have the rest of it? Yes. So it was a big order, right? Yes. Finally, it turned out to be a whole catalog. Wow. You have traveled to so many countries through work and won many awards too. Can you tell me a little about these trips and your awards? Well, Vedan, actually these trips used to be conducted once a year. And this used to be based on the performance of each and every person and the area for the whole year. So we, this used to be called as incentive trips. I have traveled quite a lot of places around the world and in, the, in India. And these conferences, we call it conference. So these trips are all extremely exciting and fun. And during these uh, trips, there used to be an awards night. And this awards night was totally based on the performance that has been done in the whole year. So based on that, the awards used to be given. I have won quite a lot of awards in my 23 years of experience in ETL. And uh, to name a few, yes, I got an award as a best branch manager and uh, best sales and recruiting. And I also, we helped, and I, as a branch head, yes, we got a lot of awards for the area as the best area, runners up, quite a few of them to name a few. Why is it important for children to read good and fun books? Well, that is a good question, Vedant. Reading stimulates the brain cells. So I'm, you, you are a good example about it. And I, you, I know you read a lot of books. And that's basically because your parents exposed you to reading when you were a tiny little baby. So it's very, very important for children to read good books because they, yes, stimulation happens. Plus, because of stimulation, they tend to ask a lot of questions. And by asking a lot of questions, they get good answers and they learn a lot. Their uh, view about things also widens. So this is very, very important that children should read books. Why don't you give us, give me an example. How do, why do you like to read books? Because they're fun and, and I mean, they're super fun. They're super fun. And books are man's best friend, right? You can yep. carry a book anywhere. Yeah. You never get bored. You never get bored. Yes. So which is your favorite book? Mm, no, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. I love them. I know it is Harry Potter. No, yes, no? and yes, and lots of others. I know lots and tin, Tintin yes. and Tintin and stuff like that. Okay, good, good. That's nice. But I like uh, almost all of the books. Yes, lots of them. And I know you're a fast reader too. Yeah. Yeah. I can read like two hundred pages in an hour. My God. And which is the most favorite place that you travel to? Which is the most favorite place? Actually, each place is quite different. Yes, 
I, when I had gone to Turkey, I loved that place. And I also liked Egypt. Egypt I visited twice. And um, in Egypt, what happened is uh, we were staying in Mena House, a hotel, where um, my room was facing pyramids. Okay. And in the night, when I used to open the balcony door, I used to have that eerie feeling. Because we read so much about Egypt, the pyramids and the pharaohs who were all buried in, under all of that. So it started giving me a very eerie feeling. But then I liked going there in the daytime. We, we went inside the pyramid right up to one certain level where we had to crawl and go. You couldn't walk because the roof was very low. So you can imagine how this pyramid was built by these people. They literally dragged the stones up. I'm sure you would have read about it. You had a project too, right? Yeah. I mean, like, did you get lost in one of those fake chambers too, so that the robbers didn't come? <laughs> no, no, no. We were always in a group. Wherever we went to these foreign countries, we always were in a group. Yes, but did you and your group, like, get lost in the fake chain in the fake tunnels no we were allowed only to a certain level we done we were not allowed to go beyond that well, did you visit the king's chamber uh not really actually uh, there was one chamber where it just it's just blocked and uh, in fact in national geographic also they wanted to explore as to what is there in it they sent the camera in it but then they, they were not allowed to do it. I don't know. Just till there we had gone. It may not be the king's chamber, but then that's what it is. The museum is really good. Yeah, Cairo. I actually want to go there sometime. Oh, yes. We'll all go. Yeah. I'll be your guide. Thank you. Post-retirement, you have taken up a new challenge, um, setting up art tricks. I know you're really good at it. What motivated you to do it? Well, Vedant, actually, as a child, I loved to do, I, I loved to paint. In, during my middle school, in fact, I had a training on oil painting too. But then as I grew up, what happened was this painting part of it went to the background and I started learning Carnatic music for about 10 years. And... Um, well, as I grew up, even the music part of it, I got so busy with my studies, the music part of it took a backstage. Now, after retirement, I've gone back to my art, which has been my passion. And um, I love to paint a lot of folk art, that is village art. So that's what it is. And as a child, I always wanted to be a singer when I learned, started learning music. Carnatic music. But then, well, things change as we grow up, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what happened. You sent us some of your rangolis and they're really nice. Oh, yes. Can you tell me more about art tricks, like all the art you do? and See, basically, I developed on my painting through YouTube, online. I saw all these tutorials and I that's how I developed Initially, I started with decoupage, which is actually done on um, anything, any surface we can do decoupage. So that I did it for quite some time and I still do it. Then I started doing glass paintings on bottles. Actually, um, in our office, there, was, there are doors, glass doors for which I did some glass painting on it. So that's how from there I started glass painting and I started painting on bottles and different glass services. And then I started painting the village art. For example, I started painting Madhubani and I started doing Cherial. Cherial is a village where it's close to Warangal. In this village, they painted on their walls of the house, outer walls of the house. So that is basically, it used to be the life and village. And I also did Kalamkari, quite a few of Kalamkari paintings. So like that, I have developed. And then now the need of the hour has been rangolis. It's all fancy rangolis because of the festive season. 
So I started doing rangolis, centerpieces and borders and things like that. Like we have the Krishna footprints you sent for Janmashtami. Exactly. We have yes. the flower petals for Ganesh Chaturthi. Hmm. Yes. That's how I developed. And I'm enjoying it, Vedant. Something to yeah. do after retirement, not keep myself mm. idle. And and best of all, something to do during COVID. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. For the past two years, yes. <laughs> Do you sell it or do you do it for yourself? I do. I sell it. I do get a lot of orders and on orders, I make it for them as per their requirement. If the listeners want to order, how can they contact you? You'll have to give my Facebook uh, the thing and my telephone number. Dear listeners, we'll put up the link to the Artrix Facebook page in the show notes. Which artwork of yours is the is your favorite? Like, Madhubani or paint or um, rangoli or painting glass actually painting. all of them Vedant all of them I have selected a few of the artworks which I like and I like all of them yes my dream and wish is basically to learn Tanjore painting also I would definitely want to learn Tanjore painting because Tanjore painting is something which is a little difficult to learn online it has to be tutored in person. So because of the COVID and things like that, I just couldn't go, but I will. I will definitely want to learn uh, Tanjore painting. And you will? Yes. I know that you've been very active in Rotary. Can you tell me a little bit about what you have done there? Well, Vedant, I have been associated with Rotary for the past 32 years. And I have also been a member of an inner wheel, which is the ladies' wing of Rotary. And I joined Rotary as a Rotarian about 20 years back. And I've also held the position of a president, uh, uh, apart from a uh, lot of other positions that I held so far. See, our main uh, interest in our, our club is basically educating underprivileged children, plus we have also taken up a slum where we have developed that slum by giving them electricity, water and sanitation. Other than um, social service, we also meet once a month, which is also called a fellowship where we have fun and meet people. Rotary seems like a really fun place where you do good while having fun. What did you want to be as a child? Well, as I mentioned, I always wanted to be a singer of Carnatic music. Well, and then later on in life, yes, I wanted to be a painter because I learned painting. So that's how it is. And somewhere during my college days, I wanted to be a banker. That's how I took up BCom. So finally, I have become an artist. Like you want. I'm happy to be. about. Mm-hmm. What are your hobbies? My hobbies, I love to travel. So you can imagine the cold, yeah. what it has done to people who love to travel. Yes, yeah, so sad. Yeah. So I love to travel. I like to read, which has reduced considerably <laughs> now. And I like to listen to music. And yes, overall, I like to meet people. Yeah. But sadly, you can't do traveling and meeting people. Yeah, that is true. That is very, very true. Maybe mm-hmm. someday, yes, in the near yeah. future. Maybe. Maybe someday. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you, Vedan, for calling me on your show. I really enjoyed it. Did you? I more than enjoyed it. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. See you. See you. Dear listeners, follow my Facebook page, Curious Vedant, to get updates on my upcoming episodes. To listen at leisure on your phone and get notified about future episodes, subscribe by searching for Curious Vedant 
where you get your podcast such as apple podcast spotify stitcher google podcast and many more you can also listen to my show on curiousvedant.com thank you for listening to curious vedant and don't forget to rate and leave comments